What up, Marsh Pod? Coming to you with some live reactions. Uh, we'll break down five things uh, that we noticed. We're recording this ahead of the Wednesday night games, so this is all going to focus on um, what was a very entertaining Tuesday night of basketball. Um, the three games that we had uh, on national broadcast, and also the ones that were uh, were not. So um, yeah, let's get right to it. Okay, we're going to start with the nightcap of the triple header, the, the most anticipated game of the early SimWorld season. Of course, Showtime defeats Bay Area on the back of a absolutely massive night from Bronny James. 34 points. I think it was 13 of 21 for shooting. Really, he just got to wherever he wanted, um, whenever he wanted, especially in the fourth quarter. Entered as a close game. He goes along with Bryce on a 13-0 run that makes it 59-59 to 72-59, and then when Bay Area they have the delay a game penalty or call not penalty this isn't football uh, call that gets the ball back to Bay Area I think it was 78-69 something like that, and they go on this quick 7-0 run they get within two, and then it was Bronny James who who levels the playing field he drives right past uh, the defender. Powers home the dunk, basically seals it with, I think it was like 40 seconds left. So it was the Bronny James show. That's great They that Showtime has a guy that they can lean on. My lone concern here is you want to see a little bit more from some of the other pieces of that puzzle. It's a lot of a game. It's a lot of game planning that's directly based off Bronny James. Now, if he's going to be that which he wasn't in their opener in their loss. He was not as a, as aggressive, nor was he as efficient. But if he's going to be that version, Showtime clearly can can make a lot of noise and, and should be a very serious contender for a championship. If he's anything less than that, I think question marks come. This isn't to say that Showtime doesn't have good basketball players. They most certainly do have good basketball players. <clears throat> but they weren't nearly as aggressive or efficient at getting to their spots and making baskets as Bronny James was. So it's, hey, great win, but let's see if they make other improvements that allow them to be a more consistently efficient bunch. Go to the other side, Bay Area. Um, When they went up early, it was 28-15, late first quarter, and a, a brief thought creeped into my mind, and I'm glad I didn't say it out loud, but I said, could this team go undefeated? Now, obviously, that lasted one game, their undefeated streak. But that's how talented this team is offensively. They get to the spots that they want so well. They have so many options. And the reason that this game really was Showtime leading by 2-7 to seven points for most of the game until the fourth quarter when quickly Bay Area caught up and then Showtime ran away with it. They just were completely out of their offensive sets. But that's not the focus that I'm I'm most concerned about. My concern is their perimeter defense. It's the second straight game that they have just gotten beat by good guards. It was Lace Darius Outlaw and Mikey Williams in the opener in a game that if you just watched offensively Bay Area, that should have been a 15 to 25 point win. It was not, and it was never even getting close to that because best coast ballers consistently got looks inside the paint. That's why Bronny James was efficient. That's not me saying Bronny James isn't good, but the perimeter defense for Bay Area is a massive issue. It could be their fatal flaw. I think this is the most talented team. I don't think it's a hot take to say it's the most talented team in Sim World Tours. But their ineptitude at stopping guards at the point of attack is a major major flaw and with the wrong matchup is going to be a reason that they potentially get knocked out early in the tournament when we get to that point there's plenty of time for that to be adjusted but their perimeter defense was just really bad for the second straight game against good guards and there's just no way that you're going to make a run through this tournament with the amount of elite guards that we have in this league without running into one of them Southeast Select, they rally back. They get a second straight win. They do it because Trey Turner has 14 points in the fourth quarter. He hits the go-ahead three with 21 seconds left. He might be the most clutch player in SimWorld Hoops, and he's certainly showcased that between the first two games of this season. But my bigger concern for Southeast as a whole is they need to find ways to not make that a thing, right? 
you when you establish yourself as a team that's capable of coming back, that's great. But when you establish yourself as only a team that's capable of only coming back and never one that's able to get the lead and hold on to it, that's concerning. Look at the Minnesota Vikings last season. They were a team that was constantly making huge comeback after huge comeback. And how did that fare for them in the NFL playoffs? It didn't. They get knocked out early because they don't have, they didn't have the ability to hold a lead, to build a lead, and be aggressive off the bat. At the bat, they needed that. We're rallying back. That's where Southeast Select is at early in the season. They need to find ways to be a good basketball team for four quarters and not just the fourth. Indy Stripes they lose for the second straight time. They give Beyond the Arc their first win of the game or of the season. Uh, Beyond the Arc comes in, they lose two games by 24 points each. They just don't look good. Second game, they only score 48. It's just a, an offensive team, completely out of rhythm, defensively unable to stop anybody. And they didn't look anything like that against Indy Stripes. But my bigger question for the Stripes is what happened to Johan Nojovic. He had 11 points in the first half coming off the bench. He had... 10 minutes in the first half of 16. He was the best score that Indiana or Indy had for that entire game. He played two minutes in the second half. And I understand the game goes through Benari James as it's currently constructed. But there were a lot of question marks for me as far as the decision making from head coach Javad Storm. Why is Noah Jovich not getting more minutes? Why is I don't care that he's starting. I don't think that's the issue. But if he scores 11 points in 10 first half minutes and gets two the entire west of the way, there's an issue there. And it's not as if his his 11 points came through two kind of Hail Mary threes and, and a layup and some free throws. He was getting to the paint whenever he wanted. He was efficiently scoring early and often in that game. And for him to just be completely non-existent in the game plan in the second half is a massive disservice, not to Noah Jovich only, but also to Indy because that was putting them in a chance in a position to win. They lost that game by 15 points. Johan was minus one. So they were getting destroyed without Noah Jovich on the floor, and they weren't able to score as efficiently without him out there. He has got to be more uh, central to their game plan moving forward. And then lastly, South America. Uh, they get their first win of the season, season opener for them in Yacht Club. Patricio Ramirez, uh, a really impressive arrival on the scene. He had a fantastic game. Um, a lot of that came in the first half, but he just exerted his dominance um, against the Yacht Club with a team in the Yacht Club, they just without Adam Max, that's a huge hole on that team. Now, I'm not saying the head coach Marcus Laster should change his his decision on the suspension for Adam Max for the season, but it is a huge gaping hole to not have a big man in the center of that defensive rotation. Tyshawn Isom was was fine. Um, Rizzo Davis right so was fine. They had their flashes of moments of of rim rim protection, but. Outside of a couple plays in the third quarter, and Patricio Ramirez just not being focal or a focal point of the team in the third quarter, they just had no answer for him. At the same token, South America has to find a way to get Mikey House more involved. He scored seven fourth quarter minute or points, hit ten on the game. He hits the go ahead three with like a minute and a half to go. He hits the the game clinching free throws down the stretch. He actually might have had uh, all ten of his points came in the fourth, but I think it was just seven. But either way, he has to be, one, he has to be more assertive, and two, he just has to be more involved uh, from a game plan perspective. Those were their two guys coming in, and and said it on the broadcast with Rick. When we got to the fourth quarter, we realized, hey, we haven't called Mikey House's name much at all in this basketball game. And it wasn't because he wasn't out there. He was. But he wasn't featured in any part of their game plan. That has to change because he really is their second best player. I don't think he's better than Patricio Ramirez. Ramirez was just dominant, but he has to be a bigger point of this game. We'll be back on Tuesday. We've got obviously a a really exciting slot of uh, of games Thursday through the weekend. Um, we'll see what happens there. But um, yeah, guys, have a great weekend.